Hey, what's up guys and welcome back. After a long, long hiatus, I'm back. I was working for three months. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, I'm, 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 sh I'm sharpening saw blades and I want to show you uh, my little trick. I got, well, I think it's a little trick to getting um, these saw blades, or saw chains, whichever way you, whichever way you want to say it. Um, very sharp. I think they're uh, probably, I think they're better than factory. They cut really good. So let me see if I can show you this. Um, so here, here is a tooth. Basically all the edges are are hit and it's all clean. Well, I'll show you the more of that in a minute. I'm going to, uh, I'm just, I'm doing a bunch of blades right now because I need a, a couple to cut some trees, but then I also need, it'd be nice to have some on the shelf. So these are like 18, I think 18 inch blades, chains, and uh, I've heard some people don't like it when you call them blades. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm cleaning those up quickly. I'm not really soaking them in oil. Uh, so I'm just cleaning the stuff off so it doesn't burn too much. So I'm cleaning those up. Now these ones I've already, I've already done the right, basically one direction. Uh, I've cut one side of, of these and then I'll flip them over, uh, do them all at the same time so I don't have to keep switching back and forth. Got this uh, um, chainsaw chain sharpener. And this is kind of a knockoff version of the Oregon one, I think. And it's on, I, I got it on years ago on Amazon for something like $70. Uh, something like that so it works pretty well once you get once you get the hang of this to set it up it's pretty easy so I'll just show you what I have I think I have about 55 degrees this way and uh, 35 or around 30 degrees this way and then this thing loosens up and it goes it tilts back so I'll just put a chain in here show you so when you say I'm cutting this tooth uh, and you can adjust forward and back, but so what it's doing is it's tilting the back up at like 10 degrees. Um, this angle left to right is, is uh, you know, 30 between 30 and 35 degrees. I've tried going more than that and it didn't, it really didn't work well. It was way too, almost dangerous. It's way too bitey and aggressive. Uh, so actually 35 or 30, depending on the chain. Now these are like, this is like a very standard setup. Uh, there's all different types of grinds and there's different variations, but for most of them I've seen, this is pretty standard, so. So all I do is get it set up and then when you switch it, you do the same thing. And then when you switch the other direction, I think you tilt this forward. My point, what I, what I want to show here is just my, my technique that I think works pretty well. Um, it's just mostly depends on, it, it has to do with the cleanup pass. Um, so when you first cut it, you adjust it just so it, comes in whoops and uh it takes a little like a light cut but you know like i said you want to uh, make sure you clean up you know put like a new edge on the straight in the corner so just get it like this cutting a little bit and then uh you can and then set the depth so I already have mine set, but you want to set the depth so it it just cuts in the tooth and stops and doesn't um, cut into um, the chain link or you know right where that it if it's too deep it'll cut into that link. So 
anyway that's the setup and then i'm just gonna uh, sharpen some and i'll show you my technique that ends up i think working pretty well another thing another thing you could do is uh Uh, just lightly uh, dress the wheel. Okay, let's try that. Right. So, getting this cutting, and make sure it's pulled back and tied here. So, I'm taking a real light cut there. I want to advance it just a little bit. Uh, move you over here so you can see okay so I've advanced it just a little bit more pull it tight tighten it here you don't have to go crazy with it just tight and then I'm just trying to make sure that I'm cutting um, cleaning up that whole edge and uh, so I could take a little bit more of a cut uh, so Move that forward again, and then tighten it. So that's, that's pretty good. So I make the first cuts, I'll come back to this one, but I make the first cuts uh, quickly so it doesn't uh, heat up. You've probably seen in a bunch of videos. But this is what I do a little different. The other thing is, uh, every once in a while you could dress, dress these blades or dress the wheel a little bit. Um, it gives you a template to make it round, but it's basically just kind of round. So just clean that up a little bit. But, uh, so making sure I'm cleaning up that whole edge, but then this is what I do in our depth. Everything's set up. And then once I cut it, down, I let it sit there for a minute or run it back and forth and it, does, it definitely takes a bit longer but that it cleans it up and gets it super sharp it's kind of similar to like you know honing uh, blades it, it's a sharpening thing um, I think it's getting a much better uh, cutting way different now. some of these chains in the past I filed them and so they're kind of all over the place I should probably readjust I don't want to cut that's kind of a bigger cut anyway uh, so I'll take the, the first cut quickly and alternate it that's just so it doesn't heat up because it will heat up okay so that's a fast cut. But the difference, by doing that, it's keeping it cool. But the difference of what I do is I kind of do like this honing, kind of a honing pass at the end, which uh, sometimes you can see it pull, pull the material in and it just uh, cleans it up real nice. So it's very, very sharp to the touch. It should be sharp to the touch. Um, and then you would think this is overheating it, but it's really not. The bigger, like if you put your finger on there, like it's warm, it's a little bit hot. It, it varies some, but uh, it's really not that hot, and it's it, it has to be um, very hot to take the temper out. So again, here's the. This is taking way more than I originally thought it would now because I had a short tooth but anyways first cut and that's a cut that really would that really would uh, heat it up but if you you know you cut it quick like that see I mean that a bigger cut is heating it up a lot more but anyway what like I said this the finish pass is really what I'm talking about here so I'm just going back this is not how you normally do this but, uh, so if you look in there 
you look in there, you can sometimes see it. Uh, it's pulling, it's pulling the material in. And it's just basically giving it a honed, a honed edge. And if you do it right, like it's warm, it's hot sometimes, but it's not, it's not overly hot. So, um, and this is better if you don't take such a big cut. I don't know. There's always some, uh, well, there's sometimes variations in these too. So, but anyway, definitely like these blades are super dull. So you can see, I'm, I'm trying to take, make the whole line, the whole edge, uh, new. So I'm cutting that. And then, but this is the, the whole point of this video is the last, is the cleanup pass. Where I cut it fast so it's not, now that one's hot. But it's because, like I said, I'm cutting too much. But the, the cleanup pass. Where it like hones it like that. I think that is what really makes it uh, super sharp while being all new on the edge. So here's the cut again. I have taken the material off at first. You know, so that fast cut keeps it cooler. I'm a little bit, a little bit too deep. If you, if you skim it a tiny bit, it's not gonna hurt, but you really don't wanna cut into that too much. So here's the, It's pulling the material in. Now, if you look at this, uh, you know, I've got a clean cut on, uh, you know, all the edges. And it's also a fine, so it's that fine, that, um, you know, kind of honed thing, I think is, what makes it sharp, but also just being all cut. Now, a lot of people do this really fast, and sometimes if you're not watching, you might not get it. You know, you might not be um, making the whole edge new, or, um, you know, like I said, uh, some people just do it really quick, and it's done. But it's really, like that, that's fine, and that works, but it's not as good as, uh, When you're really getting each one uh, super clean and sharp like that, like it just it cuts uh, way better. And the other thing is it stays sharp for a long time. Like, um, so, so that's this way, and I could run through a bunch of these. I mean, I have a whole bunch to do, but then I'll flip it around and do the same thing. And. Uh, I'll just do some of these and I'll show you what I was talking about. So that last bit holding it on there, like these are a little hotter than the ones I was doing before because I'm taking more material, but still it's like, it's hot, but it's not, I mean, that's not really enough to take the temper out of these. So. I think it's pretty safe. If you do take the temper out, you know, you will notice, I mean, they will dull super quick, but you know, it takes a little more than people think sometimes to, to actually, I mean, if you, if you're cutting too much and you were holding it on there and it was just like turning purple and red and super hot. Yeah, that might, but this is not really, I don't think taking the temper out. So I'm, this, these cut, this technique also, um, the technique, sorry, this is going to be my worst, my worst video yet. It's going to be the worst one. Okay, so, that technique, uh, is, you know, keeping it cool inherently. And as you cut, sometimes like you're cutting the top of the tooth first and then the bottom. So you're not, you're kind of spreading, you're spreading it out. And then, um, 
And then when I, like I said, this honing pad, you can see it pulling material from the top and the sides. So that's like the honing pass. And it definitely will make everything take longer, but I think it's worth it because these blades cut super nice. Uh, you could basically, you can almost cut a whole, a whole tree or a large amount with one, one blade. So I think it's kind of worth it. So since I've already started doing, I really should back this off and take a little less. But also, I do like to keep make sure I clean up that whole edge. But, um, so it's the edge, but then it's cutting quite a bit into the material. There we go. Cut the, the bulk of it fast, and then you can see. Sometimes even when you're shaving and you're pulling, you're pulling material in and through, and it's almost like the wind or the that whole motion is actually can cool. It can cool it at the same time, so it's like it's a technique thing. Um, but this is decent because it's uh, giving it a really brand new edge. Get it down to depth. I check the depth periodically, um, and then again, if you see, there's some variation. You know, it's almost like the run out in the tool is, uh, you know, making that honed. But look at how dull. These are super dull. So most people leave it like that, but it's just, I, I think that honing pass makes all the difference. And it is, well, how I discovered this too, is to make sure it's just like hand tool woodworking and things like, you know, this is noticeably, I mean, this is super sharp to the touch and that's what you want. You want every tooth sharp and you want, you know, so. You can see it there right at the end it, it just it kind of pulls the material in. On the opposite cut when this this is turned the other way, it's actually cutting away from the tooth, but that's okay. It just makes a small burr. You'd think that'd be heating it up. It, it will heat it up if you leave it too long, but you know, that's, it's warm. It's hot. I mean, it's hot, but it's not super hot. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna explain it five times over. But. So I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this one. I'll switch it. I'll switch this around and then uh, get gets a couple blades done. I'll put it on a saw and show you uh, how, how good it cuts. We know in the first, there's no comparison. The first ones are obviously, everyone knows what a dull chainsaw cuts like. It just doesn't cut good. A couple of them, last time I stuck in the dirt or something, and they dulled super quick. So um, let me just... Uh, this is ready, and, uh, and then I'll uh, put it on the saw and show you how good they cut. So.
I've got all those uh, chains. I've got all those chains done on one side on the chain grinder. And now I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch sides. So I just wanna show you do loosen up this bottom thing. Um, I ended up on about 30 degrees or a little bit more. Um, I think I was closer to 35 last time. So now this thing goes up here this time and about right there. Um, Tighten that up, and then this stays the same up here. So really all I did was switch sides, and then I changed this um, 10 degree bevel, or 10 degree tilt here. So now, put a blade back in, and then, um, so now this is tilting up. So here's, here's my tooth. And, uh, <clears throat> well, they're, they're all vary a little bit, but pretty close. Um, so I'm just gonna pull it back, check it. I'm taking a light pass there. I could take a lot more. Some, for some odd reason, I've got a lot of the last cuts, let's say the right teeth are shorter. Not on all of them, but this is probably from when I was filing or didn't know what I was doing. Um, in the past, but as long as they're ground both sharp on either side, I don't think it should matter. Um, it's still producing a cut on each side. So for this tooth, um, you know, it's tilting this way. It was the opposite on the other way. It's just kind of like to get up almost like it's a scooping scooping out but it's the geometry of the teeth so so that's why I have uh, this is kicked back and this is set to this angle and then I just got to double check the depth this is a depth adjuster right here so I just kind of adjust it a little bit you know if you barely skim the back I don't think it really matters but if uh, you don't want to take it too deep of a cut into these chain links, so. So now I'm just lightly touching that and this would be the next, next uh, cut, so. Same thing. Check the depth, see, I had it, that depth is too, too low. Said just a little, but uh, the same same exact thing, you know. Taking the taking the heavy cut first, and then uh, you know getting rid, of, keeping it cool. Doing like a, a bump cut first, and then. letting it sit on there for a minute to hone it. I'm gonna go ahead and run all these chains with this same, with this setup. I just let it hone on there until it pretty much stops sparking. It's kind of a variation. Uh, do the bump cut so it stays cool. Make sure the depth's not too low. 
and just let it sit on there for a bit, hone it, see? I mean, that's just barely hot. It's a little bit hot, depending. So, same story. So I just have to do this to all of them. And then I'll, on each chain, I'll double check the depth. Like I said, for some reason, I got a bunch with uh, different size teeth on one side or the other, but I don't know. It d hasn't really seemed like it affected anything yet, so. I was on a learning curve with a lot of these and I was hand, hand filing also. So some of them are pretty even. So same thing, you just run through all these and then we'll uh, try it on the saw. I've got all my blades ready. I've done, I did a total of 13, uh, two of these smaller ones. This is a friend of mine's, uh, just a cheap, it's an electric uh, chainsaw. Works pretty good, except the blade pops, or this uh, blade pops off sometimes. And also the grind on this from the factory, I think it was less of an angle and it really just it jumped up and it, it wouldn't cut good. It just kept on jumping around. So my new grind uh, put a little more of an angle on. And so um, I'm gonna try this one first and then we'll try the other ones. But these are nice and sharp, basically almost like razor sharp there. So I got a, a log out here from this uh, walnut branch that fell. I'm gonna give it a try. wasn't that dull but it's all new edge but uh like I said that that saw is just okay it works it does tend to bounce around I need to try it on some smaller branches but when you cut like smaller stuff it tends to I'm not really sure why it does that but here is another one this is a pole saw is connect you can connect to a pole saw this one's a little better uh, I sharpened this blade also, so I'll try that. Yeah, not bad. That cuts faster, so. Um, those blades are a little bit weird. The metal was um, softer, too, like it cut easier. You could tell it wasn't as hard as these other chainsaw blades, so. That's those, and I'm gonna try the some of the um, uh, gas-powered ones next. So here's my three saws I got for my uh, tree trimming project. 
got this old, so I clean these all up, but these are all new sharpened blades. They're all gassed and oiled up, ready to go. We just ran these a while back. Put a new coil on this one. I've put a new carburetor on this one. And then this one was just a recent uh, purchase for like 75 bucks, pretty good deal. So any of them will work fine. This one's got more power. I think this one's like a, oh, 28 or, I'm not exactly sure. But um, this one's got the most power, so. But uh, yeah, this one I really like, decently lightweight, it's just kind of easy to, to handle. This is fine too. And then this one's good for bigger logs, you know, bucking, cutting up logs. So uh, fire these. Uh, I don't need to try all of them, but they're all ba they're all the same grind. Uh, they're all sharpened. Like I said, uh, very sharp to the touch. Basically, almost razor sharp. So I'll fire one of these up and see how it does. Plus it hasn't been started in a while. I mean, they got a lot of... Anyway, the blade, I tried cutting a little bit already super sharp. Uh, so, let's see what my sharpened blade does. Well, there you have it. Uh, it's just a, my simple technique to uh, getting these blades basically razor sharp uh, using the chain grinder, which I just looked, I think they're about 80 or $90 now. This is where you can get the Oregon. One of them I saw was 200. Um, anyway, this one works pretty well. These blades cut really well um anyway so that's the setup as you can see it just cuts 
it makes all the wood just cut like butter. Uh, you really notice it when you're out doing some tree trimming or cutting. I mean, it's just, it's pretty effortless. Uh, it just cuts, does exactly what you want. And you just gotta be maybe even more careful because this is just super sharp. But uh, it cuts uh, easy. And so now I've got this one, I went ahead and tuned it a little bit. It, it just ran good a couple months ago, but I uh, tightened up the, something changed. It's humid out now. But uh, anyway, I got this. I've got three saws and 13 blades ready to go. And I'm gonna do a bunch of tree trimming. I had a big uh, walnut branch come down. Uh, it was loaded with walnuts and it was a big rainstorm. It just came crashing down or I uh, broke and I had to get it off my garage. And I didn't have any chainsaws here. So I used uh, the, this one to cut it up. But, but yeah, anyway, I tried that technique. Um, I don't know what I did before. Some of the teeth were different length, but then like these ones are pretty even, but uh, you just, it's noticeably super sharp and that angle works pretty well. So, but that's it. That's just my long explanation of my simple honing, a uh, little bit of extra honing and make sure you get a full, uh, the tooth all the way clean. And then you're gonna have a super sharp chainsaw, so. Thanks for watching, and I'll check you next time. Bye.